Hello, and welcome to another edition of CudaCasts. In the previous episode, we started to explore the features the Number Pro compiler brings to Python and GPU computing. We saw how to install the Anaconda Accelerate package and how to accelerate functions on the GPU using the vectorize capability. In this video, we'll see a different way to accelerate Python code on GPUs using Number Pro's library support. GPU libraries allow us to access highly optimized algorithms without having to write any of that code ourselves. We call this drop-in acceleration. In addition, by using the CUDA runtime library, we can manage GPU data movement directly. The example we're going to be working with today is a simple Monte Carlo options pricer, and I'll be demoing this CUDA cast using an IPython notebook. The Monte Carlo options pricer algorithm starts with an initial options price and then does 100 time steps, introducing random noise each iteration to create 3 million unique paths the options could take. The code where we'll be spending all of our time is this Monte Carlo function. The first two lines set up constants to be used later in the algorithm. The for loop then iterates over each of our 100 time steps, gets the last set of prices, creates random noise for each path for each iteration through the for loop, and finally calls the step function to calculate the next round of prices. As you can see, we've already moved the step function to the GPU using the vectorized decorator. If you missed the first CUDACast video on CUDA Python, you can go back and watch it to see how Vectorize works. Before we start accelerating with libraries, we should first profile our code to see where it's spending most of the time. In this way, we can spend our efforts on the right area of code to get the highest return on investments. We're going to do this using the C profile tool. I'm going to run this now. Looking at our output, you can see it's the random noise generation where our application is spending most of its time. You can also see our application is taking about 17 seconds to run, and we'll use this number as a benchmark to see how much acceleration we're getting later on. If you look at the Continuum Analytics documentation for CUDA libraries, you will find details on the QRAND library, which we will use to replace the NumPy random normal function. Our first step is going to be to import the QRAND library from Number Pro's CUDA library selection. We will then need to create a pseudo random number generator as specified in the documentation using the following call. We only have to do this once, so we're going to keep it outside of the for loop. Next, we need a place to store our newly generated random values, so we're going to create a NumPy array filled with zeros. This will be located in the host memory. The final step is to change the normal random call and move the random noise generation to the GPU. So we'll change this line and use our GPU random number generator. And that's it, which is three line changes, and without having written any GPU code, we've accelerated our random noise generation. Let's rerun our application and see what kind of speed up we get. In my case, I got over a 3x perf improvement. We can also see we are now spending most of our time transferring data back and forth between the host and the device, consuming almost all of our application time. If you look in more detail at what the QRAND function call is doing, we're actually transferring the noises array to the GPU, filling it with random data, transferring it back to the host, and then when we call the step function, we're copying the array back to the GPU yet again. That's a lot of wasted data movement. We'd rather just keep the data on the GPU the entire time, as there's no need to move the random noises data back to the host side. To fix this, we're going to use the CUDA runtime library to manage the data movement ourselves. Now one caveat I have to point out here is that once we start managing data movement, we have to handle all the data movement for the vectorized step function to work. So in addition to optimizing the noises data movement, we will handle the prices array movement as well. Since we'll be using the CUDA runtime library, we need to include it from Number Pro first. Now we need to change the noises array to be allocated in GPU memory. I like to add a D underscore to the start of a variable so I know it's referring to GPU memory. We'll then use the CUDA device array call to allocate space on the GPU. The 
D underscore noises now points to an array allocated in GPU memory. For the prices data, we'll be using two buffers on the GPU. One is used to hold the current set of prices, and one is used to store the next set of generated prices. So let's allocate those now. For the current set of prices, we want to copy over our initial values, and we do that with the CUDA to device API call. And for the next set of generated prices, we just need to allocate an empty array like we did with noises. Inside of our for loop, we no longer need to slice out the current set of prices, so we'll remove that line. For our random noise generation, we simply change the array to our GPU allocated array, so from noises to D underscore noises. Now we modify our step function to return its values to the GPU buffer that stores the next set of calculated prices. We change the current set of prices to the GPU copy D underscore current, and finally change our noises variable to point to the GPU version. Now all the arrays used in our step function reside on the GPU. Once we've calculated the next set of prices, we will want to copy those values to the host and save them so that we can graph them later. We'll do that with a copy to host API call. And you'll notice that instead of CUDA, I actually use the array that I want to copy to the host. And our final step is to swap arrays pointed at by the current and next variables on the GPU before the for loop repeats. And we're going to use some handy Python syntactic sugar for this. And that's it. Just using a few API calls from the CUDA runtime library, we have now made some major optimizations to data transfers in our application. Now let's profile this again and see what kind of perf improvements we got. That's about a 17x perf improvement from the initial version we started this video with. In the next CUDAcast video, we'll wrap up our CUDA Python mini-series and see how to write GPU code in Python. This is useful if the vectorize and or library calls do not give you the GPU acceleration needed. Thanks for watching this episode of CUDAcast.